Hey folks, Joe here at Quiet Light Brokerage, the Quiet Light podcast coming to you once again and sponsored by Quiet Light. We are a team of uh, online M&A advisors that have all built, bought, or sold their own online business and now act as advisors as well. In many ways, we're actually just educators. That's kind of what we do first is educate and help and a little side job that we have is acting as advisors when you wanna have your eventual exit. So help us out, reach out to us, chat with us. Don't help us out, we're here to help you out. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna give you some advice, talk about your business and help you get uh, in the right direction for your eventual exit. Whether it's six months or six years from now, it doesn't matter, we're, we're here to help. Today's guest is, uh, a really good one. Look, um, every time we put together a client interview, one of the questions that's going to be in there for an inventory based company is when was the last time you ran out of stock? It's not have you ever, it's when was the last time because all of you have at one point or another might be an exception or two there. When was the last time you ran out of stock? How long were you out for? Why did you run out? How much did it cost you? Because what that is doing is telling the, the buyer of that business, if they're better at inventory management than you are, there's instant equity in the business that they're buying from you. The last thing you want to do as an owner of a business that's about to sell it, you put your, your blood, sweat, and tears into this and building this business up is give instant equity to your buyer, right? You want to give them future growth, build a big, great business that they can take over and you know have a great exit themselves someday, but instant equity because you just screwed up is not really what you wanna do. So our guest today is gonna to talk to us about how to avoid that. Her name is Chelsea Cohen. She is an inventory management expert, specifically with regards to Amazon. She's the co-founder of a company called So Stocked. Uh, they do just that, help people keep inventory uh, on hand, do predictions and things of that nature. It's great software. She's also been there, done that, right? Uh, I might ask her to join the team after this because she's also a seven-figure Amazon seller. She's a speaker. She's a consultant. Her regular clients are all uh, seven and eight-figure sellers. She's been featured on many podcasts, not, the, not just the greatest one of all, the mm -hmm. Quiet Life podcast. She's been on AM, PM podcasts. Sell our stories with our friends over at Jungle Scout, um, the Amazing Summit stage, among others. Chelsea Cohen, welcome to the Quiet Light Podcast. Thanks so much for having me. Now we met years ago at an event down in Austin. I think is that right? Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right outside of Austin, uh, it was a an event yeah. Ryan Moran was putting on. And you're still in Austin now. You just survived the uh, snow apocalypse, and uh, okay. your your power's back on. We were going to schedule this, folks, a couple of weeks ago, but uh, she didn't have any power. She was going to do yeah. it from a Starbucks or something like that, but they didn't have power either. Yeah, the whole city. It was you know, it was it was crazy. Hotspot power, internet. I mean, I can do without. You know, we had a generator, but you know, no internet was the thing that got me. <laughs> you have a generator in your house? We we it's it's. Uh, one that plugs in it basically you can plug in a plug we don't have it wired sure. into our house but oh. you know we we ran out of internet before we had a problem before mm. so we thought this would solve that problem did not solve the problem mm. yeah i had a generator once never used it but that was that was me being up in maine not austin different yeah. different scenario altogether anyway we're here to talk about uh, inventory management stuff uh with with amazon sellers why 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 is it a problem i know why it's a problem but i'd love to hear from you why it's a problem yeah, it's a problem. I think, you know, it, interestingly enough, we've got a lot of people who are first time business owners when you come into the Amazon space. And our culture as Amazon sellers is very marketing minded. And then we figure out the rest is kind of like an afterthought of, oh, man, I have to, you know, figure that out. And I feel like Amazon sellers are starting to grow up into, you know, their businesses. And so, there's been a whole rash of, you know, stock outs because they'll try a new marketing thing and they won't really look at the long-term effects. You've got long lead times with a lot of these guys and you've got um, these results that sometimes are really instant and, and very effective and very good marketing strategies, but a good marketing strategy turns bad when it stocks you out. And so they don't plan it out or oftentimes the, uh, inventory person, you know, usually it's the same starting out in the business, but then they, those two hats split the inventory person and the marketing person aren't communicating. And oftentimes, you know, that'll even be a, a partnership that sleeps in the same bed, <laughs> but right. they still aren't communicating. And so I think right. that that's a big thing is that not planning these things out and not really being used to building out systems and fail safes 
that help you to avoid, you know, stock well, let's, out. The let's go back to my old, my old direct response marketing days, which is all problem solu- uh, solution oriented. What, what, mm-hmm. What's the problem? What's the big deal with stocking out? You just run out of inventory. It's a wonderful thing because you're growing like crazy and, and mm-hmm. things are great. It's a good problem to have, but yeah. why is it a, why is it a problem? What ripple effect does running out of inventory have? It affects um, cash flow a lot and it affects your profit <clears throat> margins. The cash flow portion is, you know, you, you're selling and then you no longer have inventory, but you still have to pay for inventory that you're not going to sell for a month or two. So there's always cash flow issues in this type of business. And, you know, so if you don't have a steady stream of income, you can create, you know, problems for yourself with, you know, reordering. And then when you do stock but I, out- But I sold out. I, I bought all this inventory and I sold out. So I, I, yeah. aren't I sitting on a pile of cash? You, you still have all of your overhead costs mm-hmm. and some of these companies are running, you know, pretty lean. And yeah. so, you know, say they, they are used to making, you know, 30%, but then they have to, there's a lot of other things involved. You have to, when you stock out, you actually have your, your ranking goes down. So you have to re-rank your product. Why does the ranking go down? Talk about that for a sec. Cause that is a, yeah. it, I mean, people work on the, the, the people on the marketing side of that bed, right? Let's hope they're in a king size bed. The, you know, that, that half of the, uh, of the team is all focused on ranking. Uh-huh. The other half doesn't properly manage inventory planning and they run out. How does that affect the ranking? I mean, don't you just uh-huh. get right back up there once you've got inventory? Sometimes, I mean, sometimes you, you can recover ranking pretty quickly if you turn off your, uh, your listing. Uh, so that's what a lot of people will do. We'll turn off their listing and it's a lot quicker or easier to rebound. But Amazon's looking at your sales velocity and they're ranking based on sales velocity. And their algorithm isn't quite clever enough to recognize when you're out of stock. We've seen this with the uh, inventory performance index and the limitations. They haven't built a very sophisticated algorithm for um, the out of stock for some reason or another. And so when you go out of stock, they see that simply as your product isn't selling as well, the velocity is lower. So let's, you know, move it down the ranking. And so your first advice, if that happens, I mean, obviously, so stock is designed to help prevent that from happening, but in the mm-hmm. event it does, yeah. um, it's, it's uh, pause the listing, turn it off, put it yeah, on vacation. It, What's you your call it closing the listing, you close, close the listing, and then when you come back in stock, you relist it. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So one problem running out of stock is that uh, the marketing side of the bed there has worked so hard to get those rankings up and mm-hmm. you put them at risk when you run out of inventory. Yep. The other, the other okay. problem is cash flow stops mm-hmm. and you still got overhead. You still have to pay for inventory that might be on a boat on the way mm-hmm. when it hits the port yep. or before it hits the port. Uh, what other challenges are there with or problems with, with running out of stock? Uh, profit. You start eating into to profit um, if you have to airship something, if you have to pay you know, for a more aggressive marketing to get back to where you were before in the ranking. Okay. Those things cost money. Uh, and then the other cost of stocking out that people don't really think about is what you paid to stock out, meaning there's money that's spent to aggressively drive your sales, right? Sometimes it's sponsored ads, paying Amazons for ad spend. Sometimes it's paying it for other ads. Sometimes it's giving discount coupons because you decided there was a holiday and then you wanted to do something kind of on a whim. We kind of market in a vacuum and we spend all this money on these marketing strategies just to stock out. Whereas if we hadn't been so aggressive, hadn't spent so much money on ads, hadn't given that discount, we could have had full price sales and possibly stayed in stock. And then if you're paying an agency to do all this for you, you're also paying that agency fee to stock you out. So all of the cost involved before the stock out um, actually adds up and people aren't really thinking about it or, or, you know, adding that up that math. That sounds like tremendous cost right there, all of it. And, and, and in some cases, hard to calculate, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it's easy to say, okay, I had to airship it instead of sea, sea ship it. And, and, and that cost per unit may go up dramatically, but mm-hmm. you're only doing a certain portion of them just as a stopgap measure. Um, I hadn't thought about the fact that, you know, last week you spent money on PPC that has some sort of trickle effect where people are going to go back and buy and Mm -hmm. now they can't because you're out of inventory. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and in some cases, uh, you know, I've got clients that, uh, you know, they pay a fixed advertising, uh, a fixed fee every month for their, for their agency. Um, and it doesn't necessarily matter if you're out of stock, they're still charging you that fee. 
Yeah. Lots of costs there. Okay. So there's a ton of it. Um, The drawback, I'll tell you right now, folks, again, um, someday you are probably going to sell your business, whether it's to a family member, to a friend, uh, to an unknown through an agency or an M&A firm like Quiet Light. Um, You want to make sure that you're in good shape in the 12 months prior to doing that. If you're going to sell to an aggregator, they're not going to go, oh, looks like you were out of stock. Let's just adjust that discretionary earnings up a little bit. We'll do some number crunching here. They're not going to do that. They're going to go, oh, cool. You were out of stock. We know all the costs associated with that, the things that Chelsea just talked about, and they're going to gain that instant equity. So you definitely want to avoid that. All right. Let's talk a little bit about how to plan out, you know, out of stock problems and, and how you coordinate all of these moving parts and pieces together. Can it be done in one piece of software? Yeah, we've, um, yeah, it's interesting because there are a lot of moving parts and the more we kind of got into building out the software, the longer it takes, I guess that's, you know, the nature of software, but also the nature of, you know, an inventory management software. And there's a lot of different factors. You're actually, when you have Amazon and you have a warehouse, you've got two different forecasts that are going on at the same time. There's ordering from your supplier and then there's uh, transferring from your warehouse. So you have to have two simultaneous forecasts and you have to have the right data in there. So um, just just for clarification, we're talking about fulfilled by Amazon warehouse and we're talking about your own 3PL. Yeah, exactly. So that 3PL then you keep excess inventory, you send it into <clears> Amazon. You need to know, you know, when to order and when to transfer. If you have a ton of inventory sitting there, you don't need to order from your, your supplier. But those timeframes are very different often. And so you need to have those two calculations going kind of at the same time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So you got two different calculations going at the same time in terms of what inventory you've got. Is it tied yeah. into your current sales velocity so you can do predictive analysis mm-hmm. inside exactly. of sales stock? Yeah. So you'll have, so, you know, we're pulling data from the API and it's calculating what your velocity is. And you also have the ability to look back at, say, last year's sales. Because sometimes, you know, you have, a normal sales cycle and you can use, you know, the last 30 days or the last 90 days, um, average sales, right? We're always factoring out stock out. So our calculation looks at the number of in-stock days and calculates what your daily velocity is based on in-stock days. And you can also filter out things like um, sales spikes that aren't going to repeat themselves. Like, you know, you did a promotion with an influencer and that's not going to happen next month. Right. Those things are are mm. able to be adjusted in the system so that you have your daily velocity of in stock days, but then you also have the ability to switch and look back at you know last year calculated for you know sales spikes and stockouts just because sometimes the last thirty days isn't relevant to going into the holiday season. For example, you want to look at what happened last holiday season and then maybe add a trend on top of that to ensure that you know, you've added the growth from the, this year into, you know, your holiday sales. You know, it, in what we do, uh, mm. it's not just simple black and white. Um, th- this is, this is what your discretionary earnings are. This is you check a number of boxes and here's your multiple. It's, there's so much art to it. Mm. Um, it. It's a huge part of it. And, and as I think about inventory management software and predictions and, forecasting and cash flows and all these other things, it doesn't seem to me like it's possible to just go by the numbers because you just talked about a bunch of nuances. You know, if you had an influencer spike last year, or if you ran out of inventory last year, uh, yeah. or if you've got, you know, a new relationship that may spike your sales or a new skew that mm-hmm. didn't exist last year, it, are, are all of these things, you know, the art part of what is you've built into this program and how people will be able to make sure that they're part art, part science, making sure they don't run out of inventory. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we have kind of, so stock was built on the idea that you know more about your business than an algorithm does. And so we actually, within the first six months of building out the software and getting, you know, about 25 users in there, we completely gutted our forecasting, you know, algorithm. It was an algorithm, but it was customizable, but it was still an algorithm. And essentially the user said, well, my spreadsheet works. It just doesn't work well. It's tedious. So we go, okay, send us your spreadsheets. Because obviously everyone starting on a software, going back to spreadsheets over and over over again for years, and finally settling on, I just manage everything by spreadsheets. 
we said, okay, well, that, that's obviously working for seven, eight figure sellers. What is it that's working? What doesn't work? Let's dial that in. And so that's kind of where we went. And so we are taking past data and that's the first step of it. So there's, you know, there's no mysterious algorithm. We're taking your data. We're allowing you to, to you know, let us know what you need to look at. And then we're also allowing you to not just with past data, but also future planning can be plugged in. Do you plan to increase your sales with PPC? Do you plan to have a sale, you know, two months from now on the first and second of the month? Do you plan to work with an influencer three months down the road? All of these things are going to be um, factors. Is and that, are, it's are those also, all questions inside the software or do you have an actual human that communicates with the client to make sure that it's uh, tailored towards their business? Yeah. So we have, um, we, we have a training process and then okay. currently as of this call and, and for as long as we've been, you know, live, which is about a year and a half, we get on a one-on-one -on -one call with people. Obviously, you know, as we scale up to thousands and thousands of users, that's not going to be scalable. So we're working on building, you know, more and more training. But we have found in coming into the space that our job is part, you know, teaching people about the software and part actually consulting people on inventory management. And so that's a big part of what we do is explaining why it's important to have what we call a buffer stock, which is a safety and a safety net, an extra amount of stock that you never touch. And all of our programming is based on you never eating into that, say, 30 days worth of inventory. You know, why is that important? What, you know, and, and why it's important to think ahead of time and to plan out, you know, are you going to have a lightning deal? Are you going to have an e email campaign? And here are the tools that you use to build those into the system. And so it really is, you know, the individual seller or employee of the business who goes in and uses those tools to program those things in, but we do teach them how to use it and that those tools are available. Now I haven't gone in and, and used the software software myself uh, mm -hmm. because I'm not running a, a physical product e-commerce business. Yeah. Um, you talked about spreadsheets, right? Google sheets, things of that nature, all of that I'm very, very familiar with. Is, is, is there a familiarity in that regard where it, it sort of feels like that, but it's got more prediction to it. Uh huh. Yeah. The, the interface is, um, is pretty streamlined and there are ways to export spreadsheets of all the data that you need. Uh, one of the things that we have is called the inventory timeline. That's something that really helps people who don't really like numbers, don't really like spreadsheets. It helps to visualize because if you're just given a number, you're, you know, this is the number you're going to order based on my secret algorithm that doesn't really work well because if someone can't understand why they're being told to order what they're being told to order they might not listen to that you know and we have had times where people have you know questioned the order and then we've looked at the timeline and basically what the timeline is is it's every single day what your inventory level is and then the, the prediction of the decrease as the sales go you know go through any transfers coming in any transfers going out any additional you know sales and you're going to be able to scan down the entire year. It goes out for a year and see what is happening. What are our recommendations? When do you, are we predicting you're going to have to order next? When is that order going to arrive? Um, so it really helps to for someone to be able to, to visualize what exactly is going on you know, within the software. So that side of things is um, very helpful. And then the other side in terms of the familiarity with spreadsheets is that we actually have a system where you can you know, uh, turn on columns, turn off columns, filter things out and customize your own view because different sellers are used to looking at different data. So if you wanted to see what you're overstocked on, or if you wanted to see what you're going to stock out on, or if you wanted to see what orders are coming in, you know, or your entire inventory from uh, FBA all the way through your warehouse and your POs, you can see those in individual dashboards that you can customize yourself. Um. Did you develop this yourself? I mean, you, this is this is so techy, and you just have to love this stuff. I mean, did, let's talk about the origin of So Stocked and okay, how yeah. you did this thing. Yeah. So I am not. I have no software background at all. I I didn't even have an Amazon background when I started. So you know, I guess it doesn't really matter what your background is if you find the right people and the right um, processes. You know, like for me, Amazon. I did a course. You know, and for this, I found the right people. It was being frustrated about, you know, inventory, realizing how much money it was costing, how much it was eating into my profit, my cash flow was, you know, being upset by it. 
and diving into it and realizing how much time it took. I was basically doing nothing but inventory management and trying to set up a system. I was using a tool called Airtable, which is a great tool. It's kind of like a very souped up version mm-hmm. of a spreadsheet, but it still wasn't getting there. So a, a lot of what our dashboards are, they're kind of designed to that act like Airtable. That was the inspiration for our dashboards, the filtering, the grouping, the you know hiding columns, the rearranging columns, all of that kind of feels like Airtable. Um, and so that was kind of where I started. And, I, and then I decided to, you know, well, I just need to build a software because I kept going to people and they said, no, we have tried everything. I've tried, I tried a couple of them. Either they were way too expensive or the algorithm did, didn't work. It worked for some products, not for others. It wasn't customizable, it was confusing. So in deciding to build the software, I said, well, I just have to find someone to build the software. And two weeks later, uh, I went to an event in Sugarland, Texas, which is right outside of Houston, and uh, met someone named Dan Fernandez. He's the founder of Thomason.com. I know Dan. You do? Yeah, from years ago. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Good so day. I ran into Dan. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So I didn't, we hadn't met before. And so I knew his software and uh, we were, he hung up during the weekend. We were both speakers at this event. And he said, he kept saying he was so bored. He needed a new SaaS project. And, you know, he continually said it over and over again throughout the weekend. And I had just decided two weeks prior that I needed to find someone. Yeah. So I kept being like, well, you should do this. And, you know, what about this? And I have this idea. And he, I guess, thought that I wanted him to do it so that I could buy it from him or something. Mm-hmm. And so it was finally my, you know, my husband going back there and going, look, she wants to do this with you. And, and then we, you know, connected up and, you know, got together. We've been in business for two and a half years and we've only met the one time. So it was, yeah, just that's the strange thing about this world thing. we live in. Well, tell yeah. him I said hello. I had no idea. I, will. I had no idea. Hey, you know, as I talk about, as we're talking about this and I'm thinking about it and, you know, one of the problems I personally have is mm-hmm. that my calendar doesn't jump out and say, hey, Joe, you have a call in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. There might be a reminder there, but I might have forgotten to, I don't know, turn on the volume or something. Mm-hmm. What, kind of, what kind of notifications? Like, if, is there, are there any alerts or systems in place that mm-hmm. would tell me if I'm running low on inventory? Because, I, I, you know, I can't know that I'm low and I'm going to run out next week. I have to know, you know. Mm-hmm months in advance. So what, what, yeah. what notifications, I guess, would jump out to help people that are so busy, they can't pay attention to these little details that are so critical. Yeah. 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 You're going to get an email anytime yeah. you need to order or transfer and you can set up those notifications to be daily. It'll only email you when you actually need to do something. Can you so text you me too? Set, texting? Not, not yet, but Soon? that is yes, a good please. idea. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> See, I'm I'm here to help. That's it, right? Yeah. I'm just giving you it. I'm sure it's on your wish list and uh-huh. Dan and his developers are working on it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things, you know, I mentioned we do our, these onboarding calls. I myself have done all the onboarding calls. We're finally being, bringing my husband in, you know, to do some of the calls. Dan uh, has been on the customer service portion of the business and we've been running it fairly lean like that. So because we want to get all of those ideas, yeah. Yeah. every idea comes to a founder currently mm-hmm. right now. So ideas, you know, bugs, feature requests, all of those things, we wouldn't have been able to build the software to be so robust as it is right now if we had kind of siloed ourselves off and, you know, mm-hmm. set up a, you know, remote VA support team. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to develop as quickly as we have been and be one of those softwares that currently people are telling other people about because it has everything, the things that people think that we don't have, we have like, oh, I wish I, it could do this. Oh, actually you can look at this, you know, and there are things that, of course, there's so many different things that we want to add and improve and tweak. Um, but we have some of these things that are surprising to people because they're so used to not having those types of features in the softwares they're, they're looking to do. I, I think a key thing you said there, and I just want to repeat it is that, you know, your your uh, users, your customers, people that are so desperately trying not to run out of inventory and have better predictions in the future and better cash flow are going to be able to talk to founders, you mm-hmm. and Dan. Yeah. I think it's critical, critically important. Uh, mm-hmm. at, at some point, unfortunately, with almost every business, there, there comes a day when um, you know, the founder's got to work on other things, but you've got people yeah. in place. You've, you've already been able to 
people ask you those questions and you've answered them and you're putting all the proper tools in and you, you're a seller yourself on Amazon. It's not like you're living in yeah. a bubble saying this is, I think these Amazon people need this. You're actually yeah. doing it yourself. Right. Um, you know, in running an, an FBA business, I, I see in the P&Ls, you know, the deep, deep levels of SaaS products that people subscribe to. Um, and, and often one of the questions we ask is, well, how often are you actually using those? Oh yeah, I just stopped using that one last year, but I'm still paying for it. I should cancel that, shouldn't I? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. it's costing you $3,000 a year and uh, you probably ought to cancel that because that's going to yeah. cost you $10,000 off the price of your business. Um, what are we looking at in terms of, you know, expenses here for people? And what would you say the return on investment is? Because this is an investment in both yeah. money and time because they've got to learn it as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Right now, I mean, we are going to be getting into a tiered structure. It'll be, you know, somewhat based on orders. We'll never be, you know, as high as some of these other software. Some of these softwares get into thousands of dollars per month. We're not looking at at that. Um, we are going to be tiered based on orders, but the starting point will probably be 90, you know, 97, you know, tearing up to, you know, around 400 or so. That's not um, terrible. Yeah. And, and then currently right now, because we're in what we call advanced beta, which just means that we're taking on more feedback. We're getting, there are certain pieces that we're implementing such as, you know, integrations with Shopify and Walmart, uh, the various different things that people expect to have, right. We're adding those final bells and whistles of multi-channel and things like that. So um, we have a couple of things on our punch list within the next couple of months. We will go into that tiered structure right now. We are doing um, what we call, you know, the lifetime pricing, which is right now seventy nine dollars a month, and that's for life. That means you get in early. One, we get your feedback, and we are very open, you know, like I said, you know, to receiving that feedback. Um, so you have some say in how the software is built, uh, especially these guys who started out our, our first twenty five, you know, sellers. Um, but the the you know pricing allows you to grow as much as possible without paying any extra. You get all the features, any features that we launch where we're heading in the direction of trying to save costs even more. Like there's a lot of marketing softwares. We are the software for make, keeping more of what you already make. So the direction is cash flow um, modeling because we do forecast modeling. That's what if I did this, what would happen? Cash flow modeling. What if I change the terms with my supplier? What would that do to my cash flow wow. if I went to 90 day terms? Um, and then logistics modeling, all of those fees that you get charged from your warehouse, the per carton fees. What if I simply, instead of six units per carton, I did 10 units per carton on an annual basis? What is that going to save me? We ran it with one of our, our own products, one of our lesser sellers, and it was, I think, $8,000 a year. Mm. And so just these slight, you know, uh, little hinges move big doors. You know, that's what we're interested in. How can we save you more money uh, for the business that you're actually already running right now? Yeah, no, that stuff is brilliant. It, you know, and it's, it goes beyond simple, you know, inventory management software. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's helping people, um, all the little aspects of inventory not just inventory, man, all those little aspects, you know, yeah. we've had people on the podcast talking about trips to China to, you know, meet, have dinner, have drinks, um, and, and be able to renegotiate the terms on your, on your inventory and, and cash flow, right? Because yeah. if you've got more cash flow, you could spend more money on ads or hire an influencer that would have an impact that would drive more revenue and sales and need more inventory and so yeah. on and so forth. So cash flow people is so, yeah. so critical. That's yeah. really, really important. Yeah. And people talk about, it's funny because scale is the new kind of it word and it has been for a couple of years now, you know, how do I scale, want to scale and you know, what's this, what's stopping you from scaling cash flow? Mm. But then when you start looking back, you look at inventory and inventory has not been a conversation and we're kind of, you know, inserting ourselves into that conversation to let people know, well, if you're having a conversation about cash flow and you've stocked out at all this year, then you're having, you know, you're having only a partial conversation. Yeah. And, and when you're scaling, if all you're thinking about is your top line, that's pure vanity. Yeah. You know, the bottom line is your sanity. It's what, what puts money in the bank and allows you to grow more wisely. It's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. And that goes with running your business or selling your business or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. 
Well, listen, I'm pleasantly surprised to hear Dan was involved. I think this is exciting. Um, you and I met years ago and I was incredibly impressed then. And I'm so glad to see that this has, you know, been created and, and it's so desperately needed. And it's so desperately needed for, uh, for the purpose of, of, of helping more people in all those little details. It's not software that just shows you, you know, units by SKU, sold by SKU. It does a lot more than that. And I'm real excited about it. How do, how do people, you know, get in touch with you, Chelsea? How do they learn more about um, So Stocked and things of that nature? Yeah, they can go to SoStock.com. We're also on Facebook. And then um, we have a LinkedIn account for So Stocked. So they can reach out to us um, any of those, those ways. And, and on the Facebook, is it just simply reaching out to you or is there some sort of community? Um, we do have a community. It's a, a private user community mm, currently. Okay. Yeah. But it would just be, it would be the page and then they can connect up with us. And um, we also have, they could get on our email list. We send out, uh, you know, information about, you know, the various best practices. This is for inventory management. I do yeah. webinars on, you know, best practices because that's one thing that's sorely missing from, you know, people's systems. You've got seven and eight figure sellers that don't even, <clears throat> you know, run a buffer stock. Right. Know? And there are, it, there's impact to that, right. you know, so we talk about all of those things. Well, that's fantastic. I'm, I'm so glad you have your power back down there in Austin and we were able to record today. Yeah. Uh, folks, uh, take a look, sostocked.com. Um, if you're currently running your own inventory management software, take a look at this, have a call with Chelsea, Dan, anybody in the team uh, and learn uh, the advantages of it. Thanks so much for coming on, Chelsea, appreciate yeah, it. Thanks so much. And that's a wrap. Thanks folks, appreciate you listening in. Hopefully that was uh, useful to you and uh, you'll have some better inventory management processes in the future. Please hit that uh, like button, subscribe button, give us a review. It will help us reach more people and help more people in the uh, online world. We'll t see you next week.